<laughs> you own 100% of your prison. Sure does look like a prison to me, ladies and gentlemen. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Prison Architect. Oh my, oh my, oh my. I am the Spiffing Brit, and today we are going to be having an absolutely wonderful time. Because at the end of the day, what's Prison Architect all about? That's right, it's all about making money. Anything beyond that, and you're just playing the wrong game. I mean, I signed up for Prison Architect, and I don't want to actually make and run a prison. I just want to make some money. That's what it's all about in this industry, and if you're not in this industry to make money, then what are you even doing here? If you're watching this video for some advice on, I don't know, reforming prisoners and running a decent prison, then uh, get out, because we're not running a decent prison, we're running the best prison. You know what, I think it's time we load an old favourite of ours, and then move on to something even better. Here we have it, ladies and gentlemen. It is the legendary forestry prison. Isn't it just a glorious mess of endless seeds being purchased and endless workmen running around with logs? It is beautiful. It's an absolute mess. But as you can see, it's like you run your own ant farm. And at the end of the day, I'd say this is better than the base game. I enjoy this a lot. Perhaps even too much, some would say. But hey, look, we're exporting wood and making loads of cash money. Our prison, quote unquote prison, yes, I know, some would say it's not a prison, has two. 153 workmen and 183 gardeners. Now this is actually a perfect balance in my opinion. We have so many workmen just running around, they cut down some trees, they grab some logs, they take them over here and then we sell the logs for money. Each log is $50, but... I'm starting to think we're in the wrong industry. I really think we're in the wrong industry. There are so many better things out there to sell that aren't logs. I mean, for example, take a look at the most successful business ever. I am of course talking about the British Empire. The British Empire is an absolutely wonderful thing because not only did it manage to give Britain control of almost everything, it made a ridiculous amount of money in quite a short period of time. But what did they make their money from? Hmm, I do believe it was something along the lines of forced labour and tea. So surely if we can replicate the British Empire's success today in Prison Architect, <gasps> ladies and gentlemen, I think we'll be filthy rich. So I'm just going to sell all of these logs and then I think it's time we jump into our brand new British Empire in Prison Architect. And there we have it, I've sold basically all of the logs we have lying around and I think it's time we move on to fairer pastures with much more money and much more tea. Because at the end of the day, we need some tea. Now I desperately want to sell my prison and move on to the next one. The only issue we have, we technically need 20 prisoners. We don't have 20 prisoners, maybe we can just summon 20 prisoners. There we go, I have 20 prisoners just getting summoned. In fact, actually, because we're leaving this place, <gasps> let's just get them all. An intake of 286 prisoners. This feels like a brilliant idea. We're going to have 286 prisoners all arrive tomorrow. It's going to be an absolute chaotic mess. But from this, we should be able to move on to a brand new prison. Because at the end of the day, to sell this prison, all we need is at least 20 prisoners, no deaths, no escapes, and an accountant on site. I think we can do this, no problem. Come on, prisoners, arrive and give me some money. Because these prisoners are also going to hand me $173,000 just for existing and turning up into the wonderful forestry farm. Do we have anywhere to put them? No. I guess they can live amongst the trees for a while. But at the end of the day, I'm selling this place. They're no longer my responsibility. And that's the kind of spirit that you need when you're in the British Empire. As soon as you leave a place... It's no longer your responsibility what happens there, so you can wipe your conscience clean. Don't worry. Oh, and here they come, the intake. Oh, look at that, $173,000 just got added in. It's the first jail truck of, um, I'm pretty sure, 200 prisoners. There we go, we only need 20 of them to arrive, and then hopefully we can sell up the place. There we go, 24 prisoners have arrived. Can we leave this place behind? Yes, we can. <laughs> Uh, 24 prisoners turning up into basically a forestry park. I think the intake was at 178 people. So 178 high-risk, dangerous members to society have just been shipped off into the middle of a woodland forest surrounded by about 400 workmen. And that is all they've got. There is no way out of here. And there's just going to be hundreds of them. We are effectively going to accidentally create the Hunger Games by leaving this place behind. Because I can't see what they're going to eat around here. They're probably going to have to eat each other or the workmen. But at the end of the 
today, it's no longer my responsibility, so let's leave this place. And here we have it, the Spiffco approved tea plantation number one. It's going to be an incredible prison, I guess you could say it. I mean, could you say the colonies are prisons? Who knows? But alas, we have created something wonderful here. It's going to be great. It's going to make a lot of money and it's going to be jazzy. Plus, due to the fact that we sold up the Spiffco's forestry industry, we now have just under $1 million to build this tea plantation. Bugger me sideways with a tea bag, that is a large amount of money. I'll tell you what, it's good to be back in Prison Architect, but of course, some things are slightly different now. This isn't just a tree that we get wood from. This is a tea tree. As everyone knows, a tea tree contains four cups of tea, and when chopped down, produces three cups of tea. Why doesn't it produce four? Well, that's quite simple. The worker has to take one cup of tea for themselves. Now, of course, we can't give these workers a salary because uh, that's difficult, and we certainly can't give them food because that means we'd have to bring in more staff, and oh, it just gets far too complicated. So for these workmen, instead, we pay them in a single cup of tea per tree they chop down. And look at these lovely little tea harvesters. Oh, they are excited to get harvesting some tea. They are dressed up and ready for this job. I am so hyped to see what they can do. So naturally, we summon in the workers, and we're going to need to build a few offices so that we can actually research the tea plantations. Now, naturally, to begin with, this is, of course, the British Empire. And if there's one thing the British Empire to deal with, it's cheeky tea harvesters trying to run away, I know. It's very difficult to put up with, and for that reason we're deciding to build a fence. In fact, we're making the tea harvesters build it themselves. They are building a fence to encase themselves to stop them from basically running away. This entire fence will cover the entirety of the tea plantation, but of course once a tree is cut down, it produces these right here. Wonderful cups of tea, which sell for $50 each. That's right, a cup of tea for the low, low price of $50. Mmm, and our first cups of tea ever sold for 150. Very nice. This is just the first step towards a very profitable future. And there we have it, the last of the fence has been finished. We have managed to successfully wall in the entire tea plantation. And with the maintenance man hired, researching groundskeeping, we are very soon to begin the wonderful tea empire. We're bringing the British Empire back, baby, but only for one day and one day alone. And of course, if you've made it this far into the video and you're enjoying it, then why not give the video a like and make sure you've refilled your cup of tea because I mean by now we've harvested probably about 50 cups of tea so you should at least be on your fourth cup of tea and there we go there's the first export truck gone that's $450 worth of exports and there we have it we have finally researched groundskeeping which means we can now hire the legendary tea planters tea planters only cost $50 a day and 500 to purchase so to begin with we're gonna hire I'm gonna say about 20 of these bad boys they're gonna have a lot of work to do at first so that's $10 thousand dollars just spent on tea planters and of course to start off with we're gonna build our first forestry zone down here and it's gonna be a lovely and simple 10 by 10 plot of forestry. Now whilst it is called forestry, remember that we are not planting trees, we are planting tea trees, a very special type of tree. It produces cups of tea, fresh cups of tea. They are actually perfectly warmed and piping hot if you manage to get one fresh from a tree. Oh goodness, I almost made a pretty big mistake. We're about to accidentally receive eight prisoners. Uh, yes, I need to turn that off. We are not ready to intake prisoners. Whilst we might be listed as a prison, uh, yeah, we, we're just not ready, government. Yeah, um, I promise we'll take in some prisoners soon enough but uh for the time being just allow us to keep buying tea planters and tea harvesters and not questioning anything that's happening now i've made a copy of kind of like the tea planting zone i'm just basically copy and pasting this everywhere it's the standard 10 by 10 planting area as you can see it is actually only costing us 300 dollars per tea planting zone that we put down which is not bad at all if i do say so myself and here we have it the first few crops of tea are actually starting to grow oh is this not very beautiful to behold. Look at this, the gardeners are getting them planted and then they slowly grow up into mighty, mighty tea trees. Oh, beautiful. And there goes our first supply truck. It's away. Now it's going to be a while before our first few crops actually come into fruition. So it's going to be a slow process to begin with, but we can speed it up by hiring just a few more tea harvesters. Let's make it 25. Uh, now the export zone is actually starting to fill up with cups of tea. What is this? I think we have, oh, let's do a quick calculation. We have 29 fresh cups of tea lying here in the export zone. And of course, 
Look, the delivery man is going to start loading it up onto his truck. Oh, is this not beautiful? Now, of course, some of the things we've improved for the British Empire, we've placed the exports south of the deliveries, meaning all of the delivery trucks that arrive, also collect exports, and we have now also, thanks to some lovely person on the workshop, got a summon supply truck button. That's right, for $20, you can just summon loads of supply trucks. They'll just appear out of nowhere, and you can load them up with exports if you feel like that's the right thing to do. Look at them, here they come, they just load up, grab some exports, and away they go. And so far, we have 98 forestry zones, and as you can see, I filled up basically half of the map. Yep, it's doing quite well. Oh my, oh my, oh my. We have so much grass being ordered in. What is all of this? We got tree stumps getting ordered in. Yes, I do believe I've noticed an issue. Because we had tree stumps over here in the clone building structure, it means each time we placed out a forestry zone, there's been an order to install a tree stump, and so we've ordered in tree stumps. These are all of the tree stumps we've ordered in. <laughs> We've just got trucks and trucks full of tree stumps that we can't do anything with. Oh, I love it. At the moment, we currently pay 30% corporation tax, meaning everything the British Empire sells, all of its tea, we lose 30% of that profit. But by researching this, we're going to cut the rate down to 15%. And later on, when we start researching offshore tax haven, which is effectively what the British Empire is, we're going to only pay 1%. Oh, it's going to be glorious. And the exports area is starting to pile up, so you know what I'm going to call in. Yes, of few more supply trucks because the joy of supply trucks it costs us twenty dollars to someone one in but selling a single cup of tea is fifty dollars so they basically pay for themselves look at that away they go bam and bam three thousand two hundred fifty from exports alone let's bring in a few more supply trucks because these guys are great i'm also going to summon in a few more tea harvesters we're now up to a working population of 50 tea harvesters very good and as you can see the supply trucks are starting to back up but you know we can always do with more supply trucks oh my the forestry section is doing rather well yeah, we're going to need a few more tea harvesters down here harvesting these tea trees. Yes, it would appear the tree stump issue has kind of gone out of hand. This is kind of my bad for deciding to clone an area which had a few tree stumps in it and then pasting it over a hundred times because yes, we now have a lot of tree stumps that we can only manually get rid of. That's right, this game doesn't let you automatically dump tree stumps and of course we physically can't install them in the forestry area because you can't install a tree stump. This game's not that stupid. Oh goodness. There we go. I think I've finally solved the issue of the tree stumps. We are just going to have to put up with the fact that we now own about 200 tree stumps. But other than that, the British Empire is having a great success at the moment. I mean, just look at this. We've got this beautiful forestry area. This is kind of the peasantry area of teas. So whilst the teas down here are good, as you can see, the, the soil quality isn't the best. It's a bit patchy. It's a bit dry. It's a bit sandy. You've got a bit more of a coarse cup of tea. But as soon as you kind of get up here, you've got, oh, beautiful, luscious green plantations. Mm, these are going to be beautiful. We're going to have some beautiful trees growing on here and they're going to produce some premium English breakfast tea. And of course, it gets dropped in the export section where it will get exported. Oh, look at them arrive. There we go. And workmen, just load them up with some tea. There we go. There's one. And away it goes. Hang on a second. Look at all these workmen hanging around down here. Are they trying to escape? Oh, no, 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 no. There's no escape from here, my friend. You will soon enough find that there is no way out. Why are we still here? Just to suffer? Every night, I feel my leg, my arm, even my fingers. The body I've lost, the comrades I've lost, it won't stop better. Oh, there we go. This is turning out very well. Here we've got the workmen busy chopping down all of these trees, laying down the premium lawns for those premium cups of tea. I can't wait to see what we end up making from this monstrosity. And of course, whilst this is all happening, the trucks are getting loaded up with cups of tea. Hang on a second, I just got a call from the government. They're happy with the fact that we're paying large amounts of taxes for tea exports, and they're happy that we are actually producing a large amount of tea. They only have one slight issue. We don't have any prisoners. Apparently that means we're not really entitled to the $2,000 of federal grant that we currently receive per day. Now, as much as I would be willing to, you know, accept that we are no longer registered as a prison and don't receive that federal grant, I like money. And I'm sure you like money too. And of course, I don't want to be known as a tea plantation. No, 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 no. People start thinking you're a tea plantation, uh, they're going to start asking too many questions like, are your workers getting food? Are they getting paid? <laughs> and then, then they might start trying to unionize and what? Next thing you know, you're suddenly running a communist empire, and we can't be having that, ladies and gentlemen. 
So we need to make sure we have space for one prisoner. There we go. We got the kitchen set up. It's got some cups of tea in it. We're going to buy one single cook. And that's all we're going to need. There we go. We've now got space for one prisoner. We can in fact open up our prison and have this one guy arrive so that we can stay being registered a prison and so that we can receive that federal grant as well as, oh, look at all that tasty export profit we're going to make. He has arrived. Here we go. Oh, here he is. It's Kaggle. Oh, it's Brian Kaggle. Let's take a look at Brian Kaggle. Brian Kaggle is a 61-year-old bloke who's currently serving three years for perjury. What a nice guy. He's got two daughters and an ex-wife. What a guy. You know, he's a pretty spicy character and he's got a wonderful time to look forward to. Oh, and here come the tea export trucks. Look at them. It's getting laden with all of this wonderful tea. Away they go. Oh, and our prison is already worth more than the previous one. The previous one was massive, I'd like to point out. Like, absolutely huge. And this one is apparently worth 1.2 million. Much, much, much more than the previous prison. This is great. There we go. I've kind of messed with the schedule for minimum security. He's basically got some wonderful things he can do in the day. He can either sleep or he can eat and then just repeat. There is nothing else in this world for him to enjoy. But hey, you know, he gets food, he gets to sit in a cell, and he can hear loads of tea being harvested outside of his little room. Beyond that, he can't see a thing or feel a thing. Perhaps maybe we give him some windows so that he can see what's happening happening out here. Yes, let's give him some great big large windows so that he can look out onto the real world and question why on earth he's been placed into a tea empire. Actually, you know what, it might also be a good idea to start expanding southwards, yes. Of course, we're going to have to expand the fence so that, uh, you know, the workmen don't escape because uh, at this point, 70 tea harvesters, they might start wondering about unionising and oh, oh, we can't be having that around here. Maybe we just keep going left. Yeah, let's do that. Let's buy up left. Bam, here we have it. New land, new opportunities, new money. What are we going to need? We're going to need a massive perimeter fence, of course, because we don't want those workmen getting away. How about we do something crazy and we just create two massive massive forest trees. This is going to be the experimentation area. We're just going to have two ridiculously large forestry zones. Oh, and they're going to be glorious. This is going to be the efficient plantation area, and this place is just going to be the absolute slog to get through. Craggle's doing great. He's currently having some food time. He's feeling a bit worried about hygiene, but hey, don't worry. I gave you a few showers here. It'd be pretty annoying if Brian, our only prisoner, manages to escape. <laughs> it would look pretty bad for us. It appears we're buying a lot of tree. 12,000 just spent on tea tree. Oh, well, that's fine. It's going to give our gardeners something to do, to say the least. We can start to fill out this brand new, ridiculously large forestry area. As this one single worker... Oh, he's resting. <gasps> I thought he was meant to build the fence, and he... Did you see that, ladies and gentlemen? He was building his own fence to wall himself in, and he chose to rest? And it's only 12pm? Lunchtime? And he was having a rest for like 10 minutes? Oh, I'm sorry, you're sacked. You're gone. Some people, they just want the entire world from us, ladies and gentlemen. I can't believe it. Thankfully, due to our keen eyes and senses of slacking, we knew someone was not doing their job correctly. Oh, look, it's a baby tea tree. It's got a tiny little cup of tea. That's right, when tea trees are at their small stage like this, they only have one cup of tea, but they grow until they have four cups of tea. And, you know, it's once they hit that four cup of tea mark, that's when you really want to get harvesting them. Like, look at all of these here. Look at how much tea is lying around on the floor. So much wonderful tea. Oh, this is great. I've decided to also expand out even further. Don't ask why, I just think it's a brilliant idea. And of course, because we are expanding it out even further, we're going to need even more fences. That's right. we got to make sure that these workmen, you know, they feel safe, they feel protected from the outside world, and most importantly, they don't have the urge to try and leave. If we start having thousands of workers leaving the tea plantation, going on about how they weren't getting paid, going on about how there wasn't any food, going on about the fact that there was only one guard, and that they were walled in against their will, and had absolutely no time off. If we had people leaving the prison, well, I say prison, are we in prison anymore? Yes, if we have people leaving the prison, complaining like that, uh, the government might start investigating us, and uh, we already got pretty close with the government trying to shut us down when they noticed that, yeah, we had no prisoners, but now, look at us. We have prisoners, and why is there a tea harvester resting away here in the prisoner's cell? Excuse me, tea harvester, you're fired. What do you think you're doing, sitting in here listening to a radio? <gasps> Maybe he was trying to learn about the outside news. Oh, no, 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 no. Tea planters, if you start learning about what's happening in the outside world, you're going to realise that uh, actually there's a minimum wage that's been installed. Can't be having that. Anyway, let's get some more supply trucks in. We need to start exporting all this tea. That, you know, I think we need more workmen. I think we need more gardeners as well. I think we just need a bit more of everything. Right, let's increase.
increase the amount of tea planters we have. Bam, away you go tea planters, away you go. And tea harvesters, let's get you guys up to 100. Bam, 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 bam. And that is a 100 tea harvesters. I must say, this tea empire has gone really, really well. Just look at this, we've got 121,000 in daily cash flow. That is ridiculous. Let's take a look at the finance section. Look at this, exports 150,000. How much do we pay for making 150,000 a day? Only a thousand in taxes. Oh, now that, ladies and gentlemen, is how to run a business. And what's our valuation at? Just a casual 1.8 million. Good lord, what a prison this is. <laughs> you own 100% of your prison. Sure does look like a prison to me, ladies and gentlemen. This checks out. Also, we've started expanding this way. We're going to have massive open fields of trees in this direction. But in this direction, we're going to have, you know, the nice traditional plantation. Hopefully with this we're going to eventually work out which one is more efficient. We might just end up making loads and loads more tea plantations. And at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. Goodness, so many tea plantations have been built. We're up to 285 forestry zones. You can look at them all here. This is great. We have four mega fields, as I'm going to call them, the mega crop areas. And then we have 281 mini 10x10 plantations of tea. These are just glorious things. But at the end of the day, I think we need a lot more workmen. Because just look at all the tea we've got lying around here. This is a stack of 10 tea. $500 just lying around right here. Bam and bam. That's sold. All of these tea stacks need to get sold because at the moment they're just lying on the floor. And generally, I mean, it's just not common courtesy to keep your tea lying around on the floor. And of course, I think we're going to need a few more tea harvesters just to get this tea moving around. Now, come on, tea harvesters. Cut down those trees and move that tea because at the moment it's just all lying around on the floor. Oh, all the way up to 300. It's going to cause a lot of issues, I imagine. But it's worth it. Right, the game is certainly starting to slow down now. Maybe we just start expanding out in more directions. Yes, let's go. We're running on maximum speed and this is as fast as they can go. Oh my goodness, what have I done to you, game? As you can see, there's just bin bags lagging around the map, but hey, don't worry. Oh god, we just bought 32 grand's worth of tree. Oh no, oh goodness. This is going to become a mess very quickly. Well, the good news is as soon as we get all of these trees chopped down, we're going to be millionaires, but uh, until that happens, we're going to be in crippling debt for a while. <sighs> Oh, fun times ahead. A hundred thousand on tea tree. Oh, goodness. It's never going to end, is it? Whatever we cut down, we just immediately get even more. What a game we've created here. Oh, it's glorious, but it's also a nightmare at the same time. Oh, when I close my eyes at night, all I see is just this. This is all I see. <laughs> Two million prison evaluation. Mmm, it's not glorious. What have we done to this game? I honestly think this is the way the game was meant to be played. This really is. Wait, hang on a second. What's happening here? What is happening? Happening here. Oh, no, 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 no. You're trying to rest. You're tired. All of you. What have you done? You haven't even moved tea over here. Look, you could just grab a cup of tea from over there and move it over here. But here you are. You're resting. Oh, you're fired. You're fired. I don't care if you have families to go home to that you need to give food to. All three of you, you're fired. Those tea harvesters, they try and trick me by pretending they're actually doing their jobs, and they're not. They're just standing there, drinking cups of tea. I know their game. Oh, one of the trees there is just, uh, it's having a bit of a disco. I don't know what's happening there. Is this proof that tea trees are actually alive? What is going on there? Hang on a second, this one's displaying sentience. Oh no, if tea trees are alive, they're gonna start demanding rights. They might start escaping. <gasps> We need to build more fences. Larger fences. Fences to stop the trees from escaping. Oh my goodness, we're not only at threat of the workers trying to run away and get equal rights and pay, <sighs> the trees. I need to get on the phone to the government. There we go. This is honestly the hidden mode that Prison Architect didn't want you to know about. This is peak gameplay performance right here. Just a glorious, massive tea empire. Oh, look at this. The workmen are actually starting to haul the tea back, but if you take a look at them, they're all exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently you can't fuel a workforce on just tea alone. Oh goodness, look at what I've created. This glorious mess. So much forestry. Oh, it's beautiful and also a nightmare at the exact same time. Which honestly is how I typically play games. A beautiful nightmare. A monstrosity which is simultaneously also quite gorgeous. 
We currently spend 30 grand a day on workman wages. Why are we even paying these guys? Come on. What are they doing that deserves getting paid other than working uh, 24 hour day shifts? 24 hour day shifts. Imagine that. You're just like, oh, don't worry. I'm just going to work for the day. Oh, when will you be back, honey? Oh, um, never. Because uh, the work day never ends in prison architect. To think you were meant to build a prison for the prisoners. But instead, this game is all about building a tea plantation for the workers. Oh, God. God, I really do love this game. I hope you guys have enjoyed this and you quite like this video too, because I absolutely have a blast when I make these. I love these videos. If you want more Prison Architect videos, maybe we can just see how far we can take the tea plantation. If you want to see how far we can take the tea plantation without causing the game to crash, make sure to give this video a like. I'd say when we hit war, let's say uh, 10,000 likes. I think we can do it. It's going to take a lot of effort on your end, ladies and gentlemen. If we can hit 10,000 likes, then I will see how far we can take the tea plantation. I will take it to the peak form of human civilization. I will expand the prison architect map infinitely out to the left and infinitely out to the right. To be fair, I might need to upgrade my computer first. Could probably do about 64 gigabytes of RAM before I can pull that bad boy off. But we are going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. 10,000 likes. I'm sure we can achieve it. It's going to be jazzy. God, our prison evaluation at that point would reach something horrific like 10 million. Oh, God. If you could make a prison which is evaluated at 10 million from tea plantations alone... Oh, that would be uh, really something special. Anyway, I've been the Spiffing Brit. And make sure to give this video a like and do consider subscribing to join this absolutely wonderful community and keep up to date when I upload my next Prison Architect monstrosity. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I've been the Spiffing Brit and a huge thank you as always to all of my majestic patrons who make these absolutely silly videos possible. All of you have joined in the last week. Thank you very much. You've certainly made the opportunity of switching to full-time YouTube a real possibility, even though it's quite likely we're rolling into the next apocalypse, which is quite a good laugh indeed. So thank you very much for becoming a patron in this very trying time for YouTube. And of course, if you're sat there wondering what video should I watch next, then look no further than this video here on screen. I've chosen it especially for you to watch after this video and I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Anyway, have an absolutely lovely day. I've been the Spiffing Brit and I will see all of you in the next one, ladies and gentlemen.